Give glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Come on, praise Him. He's faithful. Amen. He's faithful. Amen. Praise Him. He's faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To you the glory, God. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love Him? Yes. Are you in love with Him? Yes. Nothing better than being in love with the one that can love us back safely. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you so much. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm very excited to be here right now. Amen. Obviously, the doctor said that um, it would take me uh, more time. Actually, they say that I should be in bed right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, resting and allowing the process of recovery to do what my body has to go through. But I needed to come. I need to come and testify that Jesus is faithful. Jesus is great, my friends. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm very excited. Galati, you need to tell them why you need to be over there. Yes, actually, I'm over here, not because we, not, we're not talking, <laughs> but because I have a cold, a very strong cold. And don't cough to me. That's right. That's what Pastor told me this morning. Don't come near to me. <laughs> and so he needs to be strong and he cannot get sick. So that's why I'm like staying over here. <laughs> I should, the doctor say that I should stay away from mm -hmm. any kind Sickness. of virus during this time. Because mm -hmm. obviously to help the, everything they saw in the inside is very critical that I don't cough or sneeze. So that's the reason. And glad we'll talk to you more about it, but go that way. We've been, this is the <laughs> closest like, thing we've been in the last two days <laughs> since she got sick. Aww. So I feel a little intimidated and I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I wanted to come, first of all, to praise the name of Jesus. I want to say thank God for his blessings, his faithful, my friends, and his miracles are present with us on a daily basis. Amen. But I wanted to also, number two, come and say thank. I wanted to say thank you for all your prayers, all your support during this time. It was very, very obvious that you loved your pastor. I received hundreds and literally thousands of visits uh, praying, and, and it was amazing. I want to say thank you to all of you, and thank you to our faithful followers and live stream and all your notes and comments. Thank you for every prayer that went to heaven because listen when we come together in prayer the supernatural becomes a reality here and there and my friends through the whole process a week ago I was in surgery a week ago I saw the hand of God even before I walked to the surgery area and, and I saw the hand during the process it was a favor of God and you know what was that God blessing us by your prayers your prayers my friends and I want to say thank you uh, for loving me uh, when I needed to be loved because people think that I need to be loved when I have my birthday with gifts no 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 I need to be loved when I need prayer you pray for me you stand for me amen and I thank you for that um, obviously I have so many testimonies to talk about it and as the week comes and next week I thought I was gonna be ready to teach to you today but I'm not I'm not there yet I know it's only one week but I will be ready next week amen but uh, I, I wanted to talk to you just briefly about one very important thing. But I don't need that you pay attention. Uh, I'm standing here today to glorify the name of Jesus. And to tell you that the same God that is faithful with me is faithful with you. That's number one. The second thing I want to say today is I, live so many, I just live so many experiences uh, in this last week. Actually, through the whole month. But um, there's one that I want to talk to you. As I went into the surgery, there was a, a, something, a feeling, an unknown territory. As I was teaching you about two weeks ago, remember, about standing firm in an unknown territory. Just like Daniel, is, he was standing firm, you know, when he received, you know, the news that he was not going to be able to pray. He kept doing what he was supposed to be doing. And that's what I did. 
I, in the middle of the, this thing that was happening to my family, I said, God, I don't know what to do. And he said, just do what you've been doing. And I said, God, I, I've been honoring you in difficult times. Keep doing it. So I was doing it and I saw the hand of God. But there's a weird feeling that I never experienced before when I was about to go into, um, about to go to sleep when they give you the full uh, anesthesia. How many of you experience that? Let me see your hand. Do you experience that? Yes? See, the first time for those, you mean, because I went to Joseph, you know, he has some surgery in the past, but he mentioned like nothing, you know, he, and then I realized that he's been having like 20 surgeries. So for him, it was like very easy to walk, was, like walking in the park one more time. But listen, I learned so much. I learned so much. How many of you remember the feeling when you did it the first time? How many remember? It's not a special feeling, yes or no? It's the feeling of losing control. Placing your life in someone else's hands. And I was talking to one of my great friends, drinking coffee, and he says, you know why you felt very weird? And he said, he said, right. He said, because you, you, you always want to be in church. How many of you are like me? Yes or no? We don't want to lose control. And in that moment when they placed the thing in my, you know, to breathe the oxygen as they were, you know, giving me the anesthesia. Uh, doctor said, breathe. You know, the, <laughs> breathe. You know, I was prepared. I was, I was ready for everything. But in that moment, listen, the doctor said, let go. Are you with me? relax and I had a thought in that moment and I said to God in an instant you've been faithful with me and God unto this point I got nothing but to say you're the great God and if I don't wake up you know the feeling that I have it was amazing no regrets my friend no regrets in that moment. I should have lived like that. I should have been a good father. I should have been a better husband. I should have given better time to God in his kingdom. You have no idea the power to just go and say, if this is it, I'm grateful. And I live to the fullest. And in that moment, I went to sleep. And then the story gets better, honey. The people... I told Gladys, tell the doctors when they wake me up to do it very nicely. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because usually, you know, at home, when they wake me up and they move me like that, I go, yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Are you with me? They have to wake me up. Tell me the way. I honey, honey, wake up. That's the way I want wake to be up. wake up. When they wake me up. <laughs> he wanted the doctors to do that. So, but not. The doctors were like punching me. Hey, Mr. Lara, wake up. Wake up. It's time to wake up. And I was like, yo, what's up, man? Don't hurt me here. But they were trying to help me to wake up. And then, uh, you know, I was in so much pain. And then I was so glad. And I, and I, right away, my mind went to the heavens. And I say, praise the Lord. And I start to give thanks to God. Come on, give a hand clap to God with me. I say, thank you, God. Thank you. I'm so excited. I really... I was in so much drugs in that moment that I saw Gladys and birds and many other stuff. I, I was having a good time. But after an hour... When everything was, you know, getting out of my system more and more, I told Gladys, I want to see my children. Bring them. I wasn't so much pain. But when they walked, the two of them, into the room, I broke down. My friends. I broke down in gratitude. And I said to my God, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. But you know what was the feeling? Shh. You know what was the feeling right away? This was the feeling right away. I opened my eyes and God said, I'm letting you open your eyes because the job is not done yet. Here's the teaching. You ready? We must place our lives in God's hands. Amen? And number two. If you have the gift to open your eyes, that's what I'm standing here right now. Could you stay home? 
if you have the gift to open your eyes every morning it's because God has not done with you you still have to complete the purpose of God in your life amen he has not done with you come on give a hand to God my friends still much to do he is not done with you amen hallelujah so you will hear more about it please still pray for me they talk about six weeks of recovery uh, it's not what it looks in the sternum but it's what's going on in the inside but praise God amen I need your prayers until we finish the whole situation but also want to take this time uh, for two more things and one is that um, we love people that come and serve in this place and it comes a time that they need to go and move on and do all the things in life and there is two staff members that are that they've been serving in this place they did their job they participate and not only uh, as a staff members but they also became part of what this is going on what's going on in this church and today we want to pray for them i want jessica and marys to come to the front jessica they have made a decision to and marys they're gonna get marys. married come on give them a hand club beautiful people come 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 Well, and maybe you say, why are you praying for both of them? Well, they both are leaving. They're about to be leaving like in two weeks, right? Well, they will talk to you, but also it's because obviously they're getting married. They're okay? getting married. So just tell them goodbye. Thank you. I mean, before I pray for you guys, I mean, thank you. Yeah, it's been an honor just to be able to be here these past almost three years, yeah. And just to serve here and um, to be a part of something that's so great. And um, yeah, we're truly honored and we're blessed that we get to take this memory and that not only did it bring us together, we get to serve God and just walk along some of you guys' lives. And yeah, just thank you for letting us be here and be part of this family. She said all the good things, so I'll just say thank you guys for having us and we'll keep you guys in prayer and you guys keep us in prayer. That's what it's about, right? Amen. Big family all over the world. Amen. All right. Amen. So I want some of their friends, especially staff members and people that were involved in their lives. Come. I'm going to pray for them. We're going to lay hands. And it's going to be great, okay? Now, this is what we're going to do it right now. This is good. We're going to start praying for them. This is good. They're being loved and they love this place and now they receive the fruits. Father God, we thank you so much for this beautiful people. Father, we bless them. This morning we lift up to you, Jessica and Maris. And Father, we thank you for the love that you have put in them. Uh, yes. We thank you for this beautiful family that is starting. But especially right now, we bless them, Father. We bless every single thing they sowed into this, this uh, New York, Father, into this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for their lives. Father, I thank you because, God, you have chosen, Father, even from the womb of their mothers, to live this moment, God. You have brought them together, Father, because you want to reach many through them lives. And Father, we bless, Father, their life. We bless their future. We are grateful for all the time they saw in this place. I pray, God, that you go in front of them, opening the right doors. You send angels. You provide from heaven for every need. And God, the same way they're surrounded by people right now. is the same way I pray, God, that you send angels always to surround them. And keep, Father, them under your shadow. Almighty, we bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray, Amen and Amen. Give them a hand clap. God bless them. Give them a hand clap, please. Yes, God is good. The next thing I want to talk to you. Uh, I leave it for last not because it's the least important but actually it's quite the opposite I want to talk to you right now about one person 
there is also has made a decision uh, to continue with her life um, she has been a blessing to this ministry she was tremendous blessing to this church um, not only serving as a staff member but again I said uh, because there is a difference she served faithfully with the young people she served faithfully with the adults with the children of this church and she was always trying to be part of it and uh, she's a joy in this church and she's been in counseling with me obviously because she is about to get married awesome. this, Friday. this Friday this Friday who are we talking about I'm gonna have the privilege to perform the wedding and before she you know is blessed in public I want to pray for her because this is also her last weekend with us because I have give her the teaching that listen the moment you get married it's you amazing. need to submit and follow the vision and the man God gave her is a man of God Amen. and I want to give a hand clap to God for her life and honor her please if you can come yes, right now Sanita come on give a hand clap to God for the woman of God out of praise oh, good morning everyone I want to try not to lose my composure oh, like I did the first service um, but really just as I look out and I said this earlier I see so many faces that represent so many memories and so many conversations shared and and prayers shared and it has truly been just an honor to be a part of this family um, and to help take care of your children in the nursery and to help lead you young people in worship and to dance and worship before the church yes. and I'm just um, I'm just really grateful that I had the opportunity um, six years ago to come to New York yes. and to, to really just be a part of a family that will stay with me for the rest of my life and I just want you all to know that I'm so grateful that I got to know you all and for the memories that we shared and I'm gonna take those with me um, everywhere I go and I love you so much <laughs> she's gonna start crying she was melting in first service she don't want to do it again it's very difficult because she's saying goodbye as she embraced a new life but uh, we've been counseling her and Kitab. I say it right. Yes, you said it right. It's always you got difficult. It, huh? Before I Friday, say, you got my it. My K-man, my K-man, you know. <laughs> Kitab and um, they've been doing what is right. Yes. When you do everything according to God, the blessings are overwhelming. Yes. You know, they have submit to the leadership. They have asked for counseling. They have asked permission. And, 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 and one of our counselings, I told Sanita, Sanita, because they were trying to be part of this church, but he's very involved over there. And I, I said, Sanita, you need to learn this. First thing I need to counsel you is the moment you get married, you're going to have to let him lead you. And he is the one in charge. No more Sanita. And she said, what? <laughs> what pastor <laughs> no. and I say no 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 but I said Sanita you need to learn what the Bible says and she says I understand pastor and I said and this is something that I need to let you know you need to go to his church you need to go to his church and it was difficult for her but you know what we know when it's time to release people and this is not that we're losing somebody we're releasing somebody under the blessing of God so God can keep and doing wonderful things Amen. And I want to pray for her. I want to bless her. Yeah, like we did it with Marius and Jessica, people that are close to her, and come. especially leaders and pastors, come to lay hands. I don't want the whole youth department to come. Wait. Probably it's going to happen. Well, you know what? It's fine. Why not? Just don't come. At, just don't come and uh, and push nobody, please. But I do want the staff members and leaders of this church to come and lay hands right now. Son, it has been such a blessing. You are, you see, you're loved by many. You're a great friend, Sonita. All right? 
You are a great friend. We love you. You have sold your life for this place. And for that, we honor you. You have done it right in every area. And this is what I have to say. You did it right. And great things are coming your way. This generation needs to learn. Because not everybody do it right. You did it right. Every blessing is going behind you. And this army is going to stay behind you. We love you. Gladys, we can pray. Yes, Father, we lift up to you. Your beautiful princess, Father Zanita. Oh, Father, yes. Father, thank you so much for her life. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for every everything that she did in this place. Thank Father, thank you, you for every uh, time that she sowed. Father, every effort she did. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for her life. Father, I thank you, God, for this sermon. I thank you, God, for her heart that is not only being lended to us, but it's been reproduced in this place. I thank you, God, because her experiences, Father, Father, they're not going to die when she lives to another place to serve you, but they're alive. Her testimony, her passion, God, her worship, God. And Father, I thank you. Her submission, Lord, his support to the vision, her support to the vision. And Father, I bless her for that. Now I pray that you open the heavens. I thank you for the blessing that you have gave me, God, to pronounce Father wedding on Friday. But God, today I pray for her in public. We bless her as a church. Open the heavens pour out your spirit father bless her with finances with faith that comes from you with peace joy and with every support that comes from you i believe you're going to be the third unit father between her and kitab i bless them lord in the name of jesus i pray and everybody says amen amen amen, amen. amen. Come on, give a hand clap to God for the servant of the Lord. Time is running. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I want everybody to stand up once. Yes. Stand up once. Stand up once. Listen. I come back. I'm going to come back at the end of the service. He's fine. He's fine. He just come down with the, he comes that's, down with the style. With style, that's the way he gets down. Is the way you come down in Brooklyn? <laughs> he was all right, right? He said, I'm good. All right. All right. Listen. I'm very blessed to say this. We are a great church. Amen? By the grace of God. Amen? Can we give a hand clap to God, my friends? Today, I'm not going to teach, I'm not going to preach to you, but you're in great hands. I'm glad that I don't have to do everything all the time, and also I can sit down when I need it. And today, you're going to hear from one of our greatest teachers, my greatest teacher that I believe. And I want you guys give a hand clap to Pastor Gladys as she's coming to give. Love you, hon. You may be seated. Thank you so much. How many of you know that Pastor Gladys is... Uh, short right not short only in, <laughs> in height but uh, i when i preach i say para pam para pam para boom right <laughs> so pastor said i was getting ready last night he's like you know you don't have that much time i'm like yes but i need to wait 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 it's okay but i need to know what i'm saying right um and um and so i praise god for the opportunity it's a privilege to be here and to uh, preach the word of God. Amen. So why don't you just raise your Bibles, your, your smartphones, if you have your Bibles in them. If you're going to stay on Facebook all the time, put it down, turn it off. No, <laughs> no, it's okay. You can take a picture, but also pay attention. Okay. You're so bright. You can do two things at the same time. Amen. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for your word. We thank you for um, your blessing, your presence, Holy Spirit, and in, in here in this place. And right now, Father, we declare that we're not only hearers of your word, but also doers. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says? Amen. Amen. Well, um, how many of you have been having a stressful, stressful week? Yes? I feel, you can put your hand down. Okay, you're confirming my message. I know, you know we're part of something bigger than us. We're part of Metro World Child. And la yesterday was our last 
Saturday indoor Sunday school. Yes, we praise God for that. And uh, the kids on my bus went, aw, and all the teachers, we went, yes, right? <laughs> Not because we don't want to do it. It's just, you know, it's good to take a break, right? But um, <clears throat> this morning, uh, actually, ever since I knew I was going to share again, I've been praying and, and, and just asking God, what do I do, God? What do I do? And, you know, it's been challenging this week with having pastor, uh, you know, needing assistant and, and taking care of him. But not only that, just life is stressful sometimes, right? Yes. Don't raise all, don't, not everybody raise your hands, but, you know, not only little things as what you eat or where you're going to live or anything, any little things, but also I'm talking about big decisions. For example, you have to move, right? In, in a little bit, um, we're going to make a big move here in the ministry. And I know it's stressful, right? It's stressful uh, to know that and to make changes in life are stressful. Maybe you're sitting down and saying, who am I going to marry? That's stressful, right? Uh, not for some, because some of them like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to marry. <laughs> inside joke, inside joke. Okay, no, not everybody got it. All right. Um, <laughs> it's okay. But listen, listen, life is stressful. Yes or no? Sometimes. But God, this week, you know, not only, is, you know, with the surgery and everything, but Jonathan got sick, and he's my help. He's my right hand helping Pastor Tony, and so that stressed me out. And then Thursday night, guess who else got sick? Moi, right? You can hear a little bit. And so that stressed me out too. And I was like really saying, God, really help me. Because a surgeon called this week and he said, you need to take care of Mr. Lara. You need to be careful in him not to be around sick people. And we're like, uh, okay. Um, because his, weak, his immune system is weak and he cannot get sick. He cannot get a cough. He cannot sneeze. And all these things, details that we need to take care of him. So it's stress sometimes. It's stressful. Uh, but God is in control. Amen? And if I'm looking for something to tell you, I'm going to share with you something that comes from my heart. Amen? And so this morning, if there was a title to put in your notes, I want you, um, if anything, if you remember anything t today, it would be this. And if you put it there, how do I get rid of the stress? By, say with me, let go and let God. No, no, you can do better than that. Come on. Say, let go. Yes, let go and let God. Many of us live stressful lives, you know, stressful um, days. And we want a, a, a quick recipe. And, you know, in life, we want always answers. And let me tell you something, remind you something. The Word of God has all the answers for our life. Believe it or not, it's here. And we should pay attention to this. So this morning, very quickly, I'm going to give you three steps. Would you like to know three steps on how to release stress? How to let go and let God? Because it's, it even rhymes, right? It's, it's like a, a, a play with words. We can say it very quickly, very fun way. But one thing is to say it, and another thing is to what? To do it, to actually live it, right? So, number one, if we want to say it with me, let go and let God, number one, we need to go to the Word of God. And Job 22, 21, it's very interesting what the Word of God says. Stop quarreling with God. If you agree with Him, you will have peace. And at peace at last, say with me, peace at last. And things will go well for you. So the recipe to not be stressed is stop fighting with God. You're like, what? <laughs> I don't fight with God. Really? Look what it says there. And I want you to underline it, circle it, or whatever you prefer. Let's read the word of God again because it doesn't come back to God void. Let's read it. It says, stop quarreling with God. If you agree, you will have peace at last. Underline peace at last. And things will go well for you. Underline will go well for you. How many of you want peace at last? How many of you want peace that all the things go well? 
peace of last and for all the things to go well for you that everything you do will go well yes yes right we want that we don't want stress so we need to stop fighting with God and how do we fight with God well you and me we tend to not even think about it and we fight with God and that's why we stress we say that we want God to be in control but we are constantly asking God questions and decision and the decision that we need to make in life is who is going to be in charge is it you or God who is going to be the boss remember I'm gonna say my age with this but how many of you remember that program that says who's the boss remember yeah uh huh who's the boss and I think that is constant it's a constant question in our life who are we gonna let uh, take control who is going to be in control you or God who is going to be in charge you or God who is going to be the one directing you leading you you or God and every day by day every moment it's a decision we have to make in our lives who's gonna be the boss right and when we fight with God we go into a conflict and confusion in our lives right and this is causing us to be stressed we need to relax like Pastor Tony said we need to let go and let God are you with me we need to let go and let God when you look at the mirror in the morning you say God I don't like the way you made me right or is it just me oh God you made me too short you may or some of you say you make me too tall you made me too tall you made me too fat are you sure or is it the tacos last night <laughs> was it God or was it you right but we are constantly saying and quarreling with God and in a fight with God some of us say why why do you give parents why did you why you didn't give me different talents I would like to dance or sing or you know why did you make me this way saying because I have a unique plan for you and you need to come to realize that God has a perfect plan plan for us and he's the one that made us right he knows why he made us the way we are interesting thing um, and now everybody's gonna look <laughs> but um, I hated my nose I hated my curls and guess what it was God's plan because he made in the other side of the world a Mexican Texan guy that he was gonna like my nose and he was gonna like my curls ah and one of the first things that he said he said when we were dating he said I love your nose and I was like really <laughs> now everybody's gonna look at my nose but <laughs> but listen God has a perfect plan for you don't you know he made you the Bible says that he knitted you in the womb of your mom amen so you need to not stress you need to say with me let go amen we need to do that we need to let go and let God and be happy for who we are and how we are made amen we need to allow Jesus to manage our lives amen we need to let him be the manager of our lives he knows he knows why he made us the way we are he knows the plan he has for us he knows what's going on amen so number two we're learning how to and let God we're learning how to let go and let God number one we need to stop fighting God number two we need to let lead and for that we're gonna go to the word Matthew 16 24 and this is the message version says Jesus Jesus is saying this anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead say with me lead you're not in the driver's seat I am mm -mm. can I say it again this is what we as Christians say, yes Jesus come into my life and be the driver of my life right you take the driver's seat 
abruptly, we jump into the back seat and we say, no, Jesus, make a right turn. No, 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 a left turn. And we're telling, we're giving Jesus directions. Yes or no? I know married people that have cars. This is, I hate it when I'm driving and my, and my husband says, stop, stop. I know, I'm like, hon, I'm stopping. He's like, no, you're not stopping. It was a stop sign right there, right? So the ones that are getting married, take notes, okay? All right. <laughs> or vice versa he hates it when he's driving and i'm saying it's a right turn no no no, it's a left no 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 he's like okay wait a minute who's driving here you or me right yeah pastor tony. don't testify pastor tony don't testify <laughs> so listen this is what jesus you're doing this to jesus you're saying drive but you're saying no, no faster no god slower no god make it right no make and Jesus is like, wait a minute, relax, say with me, relax, suavecito. You and me, we need to let Jesus lead, amen? We need to let him lead. It's like a dance. I was uh, flipping the channels and I saw this show called Dancing with the Stars. Oh no, pastor, everybody's so holy, they don't watch TV. They're looking at me like, what, Pastor, what? Yeah, right. You guys see that show. But <laughs> the instructor uh -huh, the instructor was saying to one of the couples, they said, you need to let uh, one of you is going to lead. Because if you're dancing, if you're dancing and both of you are leading, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. That's right. You're going to step on each other's feet and you are not gonna go anywhere, right? So you need to let the man lead, right? That's what the instructor said. So I thought, you know, isn't this like life? When we're dancing with God, we need to allow him to say one, two, three, one. Remember the quinceañeras? Uh-huh, yes, turn and one, two, three, right? <laughs> we need to allow God to lead us, amen? Because if not, if you see a couple that is not letting one lead, what does it look? It doesn't look pretty. Does it look pretty? No. Guess what? Your life is not going to look pretty if you don't allow God to lead you. You're going to be stepping and stepping on your foot every time. You're going to make mistake over mistake over mistake. You need to allow God, Jesus, to lead you. If he says turn, you turn. If he says right, you go to the right. If you say left, to the left amen we need to allow him to lead us are you ready for the third one yeah. I hope so because time is short <laughs> number three if we want to let go say with me let go and let God number three we need to give ourselves to the Lord and for that we're going to go to Psalms 37 verse 5 give yourself to the Lord come on read it with me Give yourself to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will help you. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to give ourselves to the Lord. We need to lose control, and we need to leave him, let Him control our lives. You see, my, my family loves Six Flags. They love roller coasters and, and all those crazy machines that they go up. Pastor Tony, I know where you got that hernia. Kindaka. Remember when we... <laughs> How many of you have been there? Oh my goodness, I'm making free publicity here. But listen, I hate it to be there because it's up and then down and then all of a sudden you make a right turn and then a left turn. Ah! I would go crazy, right? But listen, now I found out something. The last time we went and they wanted to get into a roller coaster, I saw that there's an unseen manager. I thought it was just a stupid machine where you get up and the machine doesn't know. And I said, ah, no, I'm not going to get in there. But when I saw that there's, the, there's actually a man that knows what to do. He, he knows where the machine starts, but he's, he makes sure that you get back to the safe place where you started. There's an unseen manager. And that is talking to me today. There's an unseen manager who's called Jesus Christ. Who in the roller coaster of this life, amen, he's going to take control of us. If you let him, you need to know 
that Jesus is the manager of your life. But you need to allow God to strap you, right? And make sure that you allow him to, to control that machine. Life sometimes seems like a roller coaster, right? We're up and then we're down and then we're up and then we're really down. Yes or no? Oh, it's just me. Nobody. No? <laughs> no. But we need to go back to the word where it says, give yourself to the Lord. Trust in him and he will help you. How many of you want God to help you? We need to trust him. Amen. We need to trust the unseen operator of our lives and say, God, I am going to let go and let God. Amen. Why don't you stand this evening with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to God. We need to allow God to establish his kingdom in our lives. We need to let go of, of our own knowledge. We need to say, God, I trust blindly in you. Father, yes, you lead me. You tell me where to go. In every step of your life, not only in the big decisions, but a day-by-day -day basis, you need to wake up and you, you need to look in, your, in the mirror and say, God, this morning, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue, God. I'm going to let go and let God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He is faithful to us. He is faithful. He is faithful. I know it's harder said than done, but you need to stop fighting with God and you need to let Him lead. Let Jesus be the driver of your life. And number three, you need to give all the control. You need to surrender. You have no idea how powerful it was this teaching today. When I came to first service and I heard the message, we were thinking, should I come to church? Should I not? But I made the decision. <laughs> Very dangerous. I don't know who are using, but let's pray. But I made the decision to come. I'm going to be honest. This message, if it was not for nobody else, it was for me. It was for me. How many of you agree that if it was for me, most probably it was for everybody in this place? My friends. Last week, I explained to you, as I was strapped to the table, I didn't want to what? Let go. And let myself be placed in the hands of what? Of God. One of the things that encouraged me a lot, it was that one friend said, you're going to be like a new person. And I said, yes, amen. And a little letter from a lady that said, Pastor, don't rob yourself to experience what is to place your life in the hands of God. And I say, Amen. Let go, church. Let go. See, the problem is that we don't want to let go in certain areas. Are you with me? We don't want to humble ourselves. We want to have our ways. And then we want to say, well, God is with me. Learn to let go, my friends. So then God can take control. 